So Julie, this project has a, like a fiery thing. Oh. And so they put in this huge, like, functional, it's 10,000 gallon water tank. Cool. Confirm. <clears throat> All right, promptly at 7 o'clock, I will call this meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission to order. Uh, Tess, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Conway? Here. Dawson? Here. Gordon? Here. Maxwell? Here. McKelvey? Here. Wilhemus? Here. Kennedy? Here. Um, are there any statements of disqualification tonight? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the uh, oral communications. Anybody from the public here? No. Uh, moving on. So let's go through the approval of minutes, and I'd like to do one vote per, because I know that some people were here and some weren't. So Tess, would you like to lead us through those uh, approvals of the minutes? Sure. Do I have a motion for approval of the minutes of March 16th, 2023? I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes for March 16th, 2023. I'll second. Thanks, guys. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion yeah. passes. Uh, approval of the special meeting minutes of March 30th, 2023. I'll move the approval of the Minutes for March 30th, 2023. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Is there a motion for the approval of the minutes of April 20th, 2023? I'll move the minutes <laughs> for April 20th, 2023. I'll second it. Uh, all in favor to approve the minutes of April 20th, 2020. A quick point of order. Mm -hmm. Were you at that meeting? I wasn't at the 30th. Okay, cool. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, I abstain. I abstain as well. I'll abstain also. Uh, three abstentions. Uh, we have some more all in favors. Aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. The minutes pass. Mm -hmm. Was I supposed to abstain from the 30th then if I wasn't here? Yeah, Sorry. I think she took a note. Okay. When you do that voice vote, uh, it just goes by who was there. I said roll call vote, but I meant voice vote. All right. So uh, tonight we have general business. I, is, uh, is this a public hearing? I don't think so. We're just going to talk about it and give input. Um, so the capital improvement program is great. I've been doing this a long time. I've literally seen projects go from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. So I know our role is just advisory, but I really want to encourage everyone to like ask your questions, be like, hey, what about the, I'm going to ask about the softball field lights, you know, but this is a really good opportunity for us to understand kind of budget priorities and things like that. So don't be shy and uh, can we start the staff presentation, please. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Um, Matthew Vanois, principal planner for advanced planning. Can you hear me okay? Sounds good. Okay, great. I'm here to talk about the 2024 to 2028 uh, capital investment program consistency with our general plan 2030. So there's a state law requirement that states that all new capital uh, investment or improvement programs, projects need to go before a planning body of, of that city for uh, cons to be found consistent with a general plan. So that's why we are here today. It has to happen before the budget is approved uh, with the capital investment program. And so just really briefly, general plan 2030, it's the city's blueprint and includes the 10 elements and uh, seven of which are highlighted in the yellow here. And those seven are, are touched upon tonight through the consistency findings of these uh, projects that we're talking about tonight. So the capital investment program for the city of Santa Cruz, there's really three categories. Uh, there's ongoing and carryover projects. Uh, and these are projects that were started a year, two, three years ago and are ongoing and are continuing into this new capital investment program year. And then there's maintenance and improvements to existing facilities. 
And those are projects, larger projects that have previously been reviewed by this commission that have other minor improvements or maintenance happening to them in, as part of the CIP. And those also do not need to be reviewed uh, by this commission. So really what we're here for tonight is to find consistency with the general plan for new projects uh, that have not yet been analyzed. And specifically, we're looking only tonight at the nine projects that will begin in FY24. So while there are many, many CIP projects uh, that you'll, you'll see in the list and in the attachments uh, to the agenda report, there's actually only nine projects that we're talking about tonight to find consistency with. And you're certain, and I'll go over those nine projects now, but you're certainly welcome to ask me questions about other projects, but I likely won't know the answers to them. <laughs> I, uh, I understand. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. And I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to reach out to our folks in parks, we'll public works, and whoever, and, and get back to you if you have a specific question on a project. But we, we, we're here tonight really as, you know, to buy, check a box on, like, that consistency finding with these nine new projects that are beginning in beginning work in 2024 fiscal year. And so I'll start with the parks and rec projects. Uh, we have parks facilities security improvements. These were really done. This is a high priority uh, because of the, the arson that happened at the courtyard uh, this past year. Uh, and so these, these are uh, improvements uh, around security for those those park facilities and then the Harvey West Park redesign uh, that's a larger one they're looking at doing a master plan for this park because there there really has never been one and a lot of the facilities in this park are kind of nearing the end of their lifespan uh, so it's a really good opportunity for parks to kind of think bigger about this about this area and uh, both how to improve it and how to how to have it grow forward uh, there's special interest in the pool uh, and, you know, figuring out the programming and capacity of that and how to make it an even better community facility than it is currently. And then there's the Sergeant Derby Park uh, playground renovation, and uh, this is really part of the community parks uh, amenity replacement program where they're, they're going around park by park to improve the facilities, uh, and so... Really what this is ultimately about is building a better playground in this area, uh, in this park. And uh, uh, if you want an example of this program, you can look to the recent uh, Garfield Park improvements that were done. This will be a very similar project to that. And then the water conservation and irrigation system. This is uh, really centered around uh, uh, La Deviega uh, Park and uh, golf course and its irrigation systems. And really thinking a lot bigger about how to make improvements that go beyond just uh, simple incremental changes that improve the, the efficiency uh, of the park and its water use. This, they're looking at a, a much more comprehensive way to really decrease the water use in the park through this project. And then Westcliff de Design and Improvement Standards. Uh, this ties in a bit to a lot of the work that's happening on Westcliff right now due to the resiliency and recovery efforts and uh, Park's interest in also doing design and standardization of all the new improvements that are happening there, whether it's like railings and benches, uh, things, things of that nature. Then <coughs> public works projects, we have a traffic calming program. And again, this is actually tied a bit to a Westcliff uh, work. Their public works is looking to do, uh, to work a lot with the community in creating a toolkit uh, to set up a, tra a traffic calming toolkit for both this neighborhood and then for it to be used also citywide. So it'll, it'll initially be tied into this Westcliff work and uh, it'll likely be going to city council in August to kind of begin this work if, if this uh, CIP is approved, um, along with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, public engagement to create that toolkit. Uh, to first do it in the in the Westcliff area and then citywide. And then the food waste pre-processing system improvement. This actually probably could have been one where it's it's kind of a ongoing maintenancey kind of project. This 
this larger project was uh, completed in 2020, just before the pandemic. Uh, but they are looking to come back and do additional uh, additional improvements to it uh, to cover it and better protect it and, and the facilities. And then finally, two water projects, uh, the Pransiforti uh, Stream Bank restoration, which was to improve the erosion protection uh, to the Pransiforti Drive Bridge and uh, Pransiforti Drive. And then the Belts uh, Water Treatment Plant upgrades. Uh, there's a, a well at the, water, at the Belts Water Treatment Facility uh, that needs, uh, that needs uh, modern, modernization. And so that is the project for that. So those, those are the nine projects, briefly. And uh, you'll see in the, in the commission agenda tonight that uh, we, we have a, a, a spreadsheet that goes through all the various consistency findings for each of the general plan goals and policies uh, that these nine projects uh, meet. And so with that, staff has evaluated these projects and found consistency with the 2024 to 2028 CIP. And with that, our recommendation is that uh, the Planning Commission uh, make a motion to find the following, that uh, uh, these are consistent with the general plan 2030. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioner, questions focused on these nine projects? Just had a Commissioner Dawson? Clarifying question. Yes, um, the, the agenda report mentioned fact sheets, um, and w where would those be for the new projects? It says new to the budget document this year are fact sheets <coughs> for each of the new projects. Mm. Um, I, I, I guess I, I didn't think, see I think, a fact sheet. Yeah, I think they were supposed <laughs> to be separated out from the... Uh, the capital investment program, the larger document, I think we were supposed to separate them out and provide them as another attachment. I'll double check on that language and see if I can provide those to you. Yeah, I, really I, I just, think it would have been really helpful just to see, like you said, we're just considering these nine projects. Yeah. Um, I also found that the table pretty confusing. Um, so just uh, constructive feedback that mm -hmm. you know just if we're if we're focused on these nine projects um, just maybe having a table up f further in the document um, mm -hmm. I did see the table at the end with the consistency findings for the general plan which was very helpful but um, I just found it a little confusing and then I was looking all over for the fact sheets um, because I wanted to the details on the fact sheets would have been really really helpful um, okay, yeah, so I'll thanks. probably have some more comments around that later but okay. thank you yeah, I think those fact sheets would have really just centered around the amount of funding and uh, the, the timing of those. You know, if they're available, we could take a brief recess and just, you know, check them out if people want to, given the attendance tonight. Um, I don't know, are they readily? I, I, don't, I don't have them separated okay. out from the, yeah. No problem. I did have one question. Commissioner so McKelvey. when I read through the tables uh, in the report, if something, if there is no expenditure shown for fiscal year 2024 20, in the column, that means that there's nothing slated for the project going forward in this CIP. In, in this year, yeah. There's okay. there's a number of uh, CIP items that are new this year, okay. but aren't starting until 2025 or okay. 2026, and they're not included but in this review. If, if something did have fiscal year 2025 expenditures anticipated, would that be in here, or is that... Sort of in the future. Yeah, that would be that would be in the the following year. Okay. So yeah, new new projects, but then also new projects that are just starting in this this fiscal year. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I had, Conway. Yeah, and I I uh, just was going through the the budget sheets, and for the most part, I I thought that they. You know, pretty much made sense, but some of them do raise some questions. Um, so some of the things that I was curious about is um, the Coral Street project. Um, it was budgeted at seven hundred and ten thousand, and um, just ninety nine five was spent. And I wondered if there was a change of plans, um, or has has there been a, a, a work plan change? I was curious about that. Um, and then curious about that. Um, 
And then there was another in that same category. Um, there was a million seventy three thousand. This is project number C one oh two three zero two. Um, there's no EA at all, and I think it's for shelter. Um, and just because it is in the um, you know homeless response category, I was just curious about um, uh, especially when there when there's a budget no EA. Mm. Um, what was that number again? It was um, C102302. And I believe it was a homeless response item. And then. Okay. I believe for that one, that, that's, that's an ongoing yeah. Yeah. amount that it, we typically give to the, the housing authority and things like that for shelter services and. Okay, um, so it's it's a it's a budgeted amount. I hadn't noticed before yeah. that there was no EA at all. Yeah. Um, so something's changed. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check on that. Just curious. It's not it's not one of our consistency findings, but um, and then there were a couple yeah. of other similar things that just looked like they you know expenditures aren't quite going as fast as possible, and you know it's been a wet winter, so I I attributed that to most of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for Coral in particular, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot set aside for that, but mm -hmm. we've, we've only used a certain amount for this uh, visioning exercise first, uh -huh. um, and the, there, there will be additional monies spent on that in the future as, as in the next phases of that project, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's hiring architects and developers and things like that to, to, to refine that work. Okay. And I'll look in the budget and see what the sources of those funds are. I am curious. Yeah, I think I think a lot of that came from uh, the the federal the federal funding and the state funding, mm -hmm. which around, often doesn't work for that stage. So, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get my um, out of the scope question off my chest right now. I feel it's related to planning, but I have a broad definition sometimes. <laughs> I'm so stoked to see the LED um, lights going in over at Harvey West Field. I play softball there. My kid now plays Little League there. And it's great they're doing, you know, super efficient lights with solar panels that shade the bleachers, which are super hot all the time. So thank you. My question, like from a planning perspective, is light spillage that's actually a pretty cool region but was that addressed on that project do you remember like how you know our, our scope would intersect with that i'm pretty sure they're shielded and all that but that was my question yeah i i, I can't speak to that project in particular okay. i know through our objective standards work in the past couple of years we've worked a lot with uh uh the night sky folks yeah, the dark sky yeah dark sorry yeah thank you for that yeah dark sky folks and and coordinated a lot with public works on coming up with those standards as well okay um so, so I, i'm I not sure how they're incorporated now or think, like maybe parks or yeah i think i think that would be okay. parks yeah we'll follow up i'll ask parks directly um a lot of times energy efficient lights then everyone's like ah they're so bright and there's a little back and forth there that we're constantly hear about at, at these meetings yeah one one plus with those leds is they it can usually be directed really well yeah. to, to really limit the, the light bleed. In mm -hmm. a couple commissioners might remember Rod Corderaro, who sat up here for many years. This was like his pet, pet peeve, and uh, he's happily retired in Hawaii many years ago, so it's nice to see that done. Second question is on point. Uh, Westcliff Drive, like it's so rapidly evolving, the situation out there. And I understand the city's awesome approach is to just like get as much state and federal funding as possible, as quickly as possible. But are we thinking about, I, I don't know, would it be capital funding to have a planning element to respond to that, you know, from the planning department side? Specifically, changing streets really quickly, adjusting traffic flows through neighborhoods. Is that something we should start putting at the bottom of the list? Because it seems like we may need it soon. Yeah, as, as far as the the planning planning side from from my work, thankfully a lot of a lot of that's already started even before these really specific resiliency and recovery efforts came about due to the winter storms this past year. Um, we're currently working on updating our, our LCP, our local coastal program. Uh, and that, that's been an ongoing effort to bring that into consistency 
with our general plan 2030, which it's actually now we're still still currently technically using our our 1990s LCP, and so it's long been a, a desire of ours uh, to bring that into consistency with our new general plan, and then also it gives us the opportunity when this document's open to open it up and make sure that it's talking about modern things that are that are happening and not, and not just what was in our you know what was talked about in 2012 when our general plan was adopted you know language around you know climate change and things like that and resiliency have, has changed since then that conversation and both what's and what's happening on the ground too um, so really making sure it's the most up-to-date document possible uh, we've been working with coastal commission on it for a few years now and there's been changes to it and refinements in the back and forth. Uh, but it is moving forward now, especially because of these new efforts and just making sure that this work aligns with all the other recovery work that uh, various departments are working on throughout the city. So okay. there, there's definitely new energy around it, but it's something we've been working on and thinking about for a while from a planning perspective. And we were, we were kind of ready to, to build a lot of this other work that's happening into this effort. It's a great answer. So continued already in budget, and then like as grants come, as we've already done, gobble those up for extra work. It's a good answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for a motion, unless others have questions. I just have one more. Yeah. So um, I just was wondering if you talk a little bit more about um, the redesign of Harvey West Park. It looks like we have two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars slated for that which is a new project we're considering so one of it's like a pool feasibility study so is this for the the design and does that include community input i'm i'm assuming this is a consultant fee to do the redesign and is there a community input part of that or what's that look like i i do imagine so i think parks tends to work with the community quite a bit on a lot of this but i i don't know specifically what their plan is for that input Okay, I can follow up with them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know with Garfield Park, they did a really good job. You know, they have a booth, and the kids got to vote on the colors and the equipment. It was, it was a good process, I thought. All right. Anybody ready to make a motion? I have one more question. Nope. I'm just curious. This is um, a little bit out of our scope, and this is about the food waste pre-processing system because it is, it is up on here. I May mean, I read the little flyers that come? you know, with the bills, but how is that program going? You know, the little brown boxes um, that are going out. Do you... I do not know. I'll, no. okay. yeah, I will have to talk with uh, our, our uh, public works person on that one. Okay. I, I, I am curious. I see more and more of them being used, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, how it's going. Yeah, I, I can follow up with you on that. I'm, I'm curious, too, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can report back if you want at a future go. meeting. If it's <laughs> okay. convenient. Uh, the raccoons got ours, like, last week, yeah, so yeah, that's how it's going for yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> with raccoons. <laughs> I think it's interesting with, um, with that program. You know, the other modes are so automated. Mm -hmm. But this is literally one of the big brown bins in the back of a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And the guy walks over, picks up the little bucket and dumps it in the big bucket. Yeah. <laughs> it's really different to see the whole process take place. I'm, I don't know if, if that's something that's evolving or still uh, kind of in the early stages, but it's a very different process. Yeah, I've had a hard time wrapping my head around it too. And, um, and I don't use it a lot mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I can just use compost. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to go in there, so mm -hmm. I've just been really curious. Good for cooked food, though. Keeps a ton of methane out of the landfills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A ton. Exactly. A mega ton. Mm -hmm. One question. Yeah. I, I'm curious. I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this, but you can tell me who to talk to. Or, um, the, with the downtown recovery budget that's in here, um, it's not something we're voting on tonight, but it's in the 2023. And I'm curious. Um, it, it says begin implementation of downtown design standards to key amenities such as plantings, bike racks, trash cans, benches, and aspects of hardscaping, curbs, and parking meters. And um, 
it seems like with all the big changes, I'm, I'm curious that, that are happening downtown, if there's um, a coordination with the changes that are coming in addition to what I guess we're calling a recovery, which means fixing something that wasn't working. And so I'm just curious what, if you know anything about that particular. Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, so until recently, our downtown plan was called the downtown recovery plan because it started, you know, after the earthquake. <laughs> and uh, and I, I think that's why that language is still used here and not just downtown plan yeah. phase four. <laughs> uh, but but it is it's a really good question though because yeah this this work has been uh, was started last year by Public Works and they brought someone in to do kind of like what I mentioned about what Parks is doing on Westcliff like uh, all the standardization of amenities uh, and doing really significant detailed design work on how and what everything will look like downtown uh, that's been really beneficial work because it's not only going to help our our current downtown. Uh, but it's a lot of it's a lot of work we can coordinate with them on uh, to bring down into uh, the expansion area as well as, we, as we're talking about that. So kind of the next phase of our downtown expansion work is is to go back to the community and talk a lot about uh, design and streetscape and circulation, uh, design of buildings, things like that. And this work definitely you know helps inform that part of the discussion and certainly something we want to you know make sure that there's a lot of work that went into it and we want there to be consistency uh, between the two yeah I, because departments and i mean we know how it all works a little bit separately everybody's got their own budgets and their own teams and their own vision and all the things so it would be um, a missed opportunity to not be thinking bigger picture in that way um and then also i would just maybe suggest to somebody that we look to the future rather than recovering, even though there's some serious work that needs to be done down there. Um, but, okay, well, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. And that recovery plan was a huge success, so it needs to get its name taken away before the next recession comes. You know? <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a motion uh for the uh 2024-2028 cip um that uh it is consistent with the general plan 2030. moved by commissioner dawson second by commissioner maxwell we have a roll call vote please commissioner conway hi dawson hi gordon Aye. Maxwell? Aye. McKelvey? Aye. Alhamis? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. The motion passes 7 to 0. Uh, staff, do we have any informational items this evening? We do, yeah. I have a few items to report. Um, there's no, uh, no items going to the next Planning Commission meeting for you on the 1st, but on, the, on June 15th, there is one item currently scheduled. That's a uh, 1811 to 1815 Mission Street. It's a it's a 27 unit three story SRO project, taking the place of uh, uh, two existing single family homes. On Mission Street there. Um, that's the only other item uh, currently on the the Planning Commission schedule. Uh, and three three other items: uh, Coral Street that we mentioned, the Vision Plan went to council last week and was adopted. Uh, one major change, uh, one minor change, is that the three parcels under private control uh, were removed from the vision plan. So those, the, the references to those and how we think about those parcels is, is taken out. Um, so that's, that's the one change council made um, from, this, from this commission. The oversized vehicle ordinance, uh, which this commission saw last year, uh, was approved by Coastal Commission last week uh, for a one-year pilot program. Uh, so that was that was a big success getting that approved there. And then another thing that happened last week, we had a big week last week in planning. <laughs> uh, our first draft of our housing element was submitted to HCD, and so 
that was a very big lift and I, I thank your commission for all the feedback and and uh and support on that one so thank you very much and congratulations thank you yeah it's a good document so far and uh, it's really important just to let everyone know this commission and anyone listening that uh, uh, comments from the state are due in August but we we would really love for anyone the public uh, to provide us additional comments on that submittal that that uh, draft is now available online on our on our web page. It's cityofsantacruz.com slash housing element. And uh, you can find our newest submittal to the state. And we're certainly going to be refining it over the summer um, in addition to then once we get the state comments back. So whatever comments we get sooner than later is, is really beneficial because we can work on them now before we get a ton of comments from the state dropped on us in August. So. Uh, just to, uh, just letting everyone know, we we would love to receive more feedback on that. I'm so proud of that plan. Continuing our leadership, and uh, you got my comment about the mapping of the district, so that's already in the hopper. Yep. Good. I have one informational item to add. I know everyone has to work. Uh, Three one four Jesse Street groundbreaking is tomorrow at eleven o'clock. I know me and Julie will be there. If anyone can squeeze an hour out and come by, you should. It's an incredible project, and it's the one that completed our arena targets when it finally got through plan check after many many rounds. Um, so it's going to be a good day for Santa Cruz tomorrow if you can make it. We don't have any subcommittees, nor advisory body oral reports, nor items referred to future agendas. So with that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's 11. Yeah. yeah. It's I think it's the four of us arrived.